Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the New England Law Enforcement Training Center's third class academy graduation. So I thank you all for being here. Sergeant Eldridge, please bring the class in. Could I please ask everybody to stand up for the presentation of the colors, please? Class, present, home. Could I ask everybody to still stay standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready? Seats. Everybody, please be seated. I want to welcome you all here today once again 
to the third class's graduation. On behalf of our directors and our staff, I would like to thank our distinguished guests, the chiefs, sponsors, supervisors, fellow department members, as well as family members and friends. Because without the support of all the people I just mentioned, our officers would not have been able to get through this academy. This is a new beginning for officers that have just completed a very lengthy and grueling and at times taxing uh, curriculum. So before uh, we give our ending comments, what I'd like to do is I would like to introduce our first guest speaker, the Sheriff of Suffolk County, Sheriff Stephen Tompkins. Sheriff Tompkins? Good morning. I know it's a little early. I know it's a Saturday. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. All right, now I feel you. You know, here's the thing about graduations, first and foremost. I think graduations are so exciting because it not only brings together the graduate, but it brings the families together to stand as one, to acknowledge the good work of their family members or their friends that have endeavored to do what it is that they do. And when you talk about public safety, that is not an easy endeavor. You'll often hear or you'll occasionally hear that the criminal justice system is broken. I tend to disagree with that. In any large entity, you, you may have a few bad actors. In any large entity, you're going to have some occurrences that may not go along with what people think they should go along with. But at the end of the day, particularly when you're talking about law enforcement, ladies and gentlemen, we are the guardians. We are the ones at that gate. We are the ones at that wall. We are looked upon to make sure that the people in our communities or at our schools are safe. In times of strife, they'll reach out to us and we'll be there 24-7, 365. That's the way it is. That is what we signed up for. And when I look at the folks sitting in front of me from different police departments, whether it's municipal or college, sheriff's departments, constable services, it really warms my heart to know that we've got capable men and women ever at the ready to make sure that our communities are safe. I believe the hallmark of any vibrant community is how we take care of the most compromised. That could be our kids, that could be seniors, that could be people from other lands, that could be, in my case, people that are incarcerated. Our job is to work with folk to protect them, to protect their property. If perchance they commit a crime and they're sentenced and they go away, our job is to work with individuals to try to get them back home to their families and their kids in a better way than when they left. It's not an easy job. Sometimes it's a thankless job. But at the end of the day, we are our brothers and sisters keepers. We have to look out for each other. When you talk about civility in a civil community, Law enforcement plays a huge role in that. And I am honored to be a part of this community. And I am so pleased to stand in front of you to congratulate you for what you've done. And I'd also like to congratulate the friends and the families of the folk that are sitting here in blue. As you know, sometimes they bring home the difficulties of the day. And that's when you need it most pat on the back or a smile, a tweak on the cheek. And family is always there to say at a boy or at a girl, job well done. So I thank you, I applaud you, thank you for inviting me, and Godspeed to you. Thank you very much, Sheriff Tonkins. I would like to introduce who's up here before we get to our keynote speaker. I'd like to introduce, please, the directors, co-directors, 
Chris White and co-director Vincent Lamberti. Please stand. Thank you. Staff officers, Sergeant Frank Eldridge. <laughs> Officer Michael Maderos. <laughs> Officer Mike Miller. <laughs> I want to thank the Bunker Hill Community College Police Department, the chiefs in the back and deputy up front. And I'd also like to, stay, uh, to thank some of our staff and instructors that are here today. Please stand up. Thank you. Next, I'd like to present our keynote speaker, who is the executive director of the Massachusetts Municipal Police Training Committee, Mr. Dan Zipkowitz. Thank you, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and <laughs> thank you, Sheriff. <laughs> On behalf of Governor Baker, Secretary Bennett of the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security and the Municipal Police Training Committee, uh, thank you for being here to help us celebrate the accomplishments and successes of this class. And to you, class, I offer our collective congratulations for your achievements to this day. And Director Lamberti and Director Waite, uh, I offer our collective congratulations to you, to your staff, your instructors, and to all the people that work behind the scenes. Thank you for the time, the effort, the thought, and especially the sacrifices you have all made to bring these men and women to this point in their career. Uh, it's not lost on the MPTC um, that uh, all the work that you've invested. Um, and Ladies and gentlemen, um, and for some of the uh, graduates, uh, in case you're wondering what our role is in this endeavor, um, any class that instructs uh, municipal police officers in basic training has to meet, our, my agency's called the MPTC, MPTC standards. Uh, the reason for mentioning that to you is that I want to assure you, and assure you graduates, that nothing about this training has anything to do with minimum standards because the NELETC not only meets the standards but exceeds them and they take their charge very seriously of preparing you to be successful out there on the street. So again, my thanks to you directors and to your staff for not just meeting standards but exceeding them and the earnestness and sincerity with which you take the challenge and the charge given to you to prepare these men and women. Class, I'd be remiss if I didn't offer you some parting thoughts based on my 30 plus years in the profession as a trooper, as an academy director, as a chief of police, and now as the executive director of the Municipal Police Training Committee. Let me start by saying what an exciting time to be in policing. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that your friends and probably your family have all questioned your career choice especially in light of, as the sheriff was saying, all the publicity surrounding policing and police training and all the scrutiny being placed on us in the profession. But you know what? That's exactly why this is an exciting time to be in policing. Because you, you will be the cornerstone of helping us revisit our profession as we shape and mold and recraft ourselves to meet evolving community needs and community expectations. You get to be a part of that. That's what makes this exciting. It's exciting for us that have been in the profession for a while because we're having conversations that haven't been had in decades. And we're involved with community at levels that we've wanted but were never able to achieve. So despite the seeming paradox, this is a great time to be in policing. And from that perspective, I want to give you four challenges before you leave here today. My first challenge directly ties to the national dialogue about community engagement and community policing and how we fit into our communities. It's a reminder to you that by statute, the statute calls you police officers, not law enforcement. 
Now, while most people use those terms interchangeably, I contend that there is a subtle but yet very distinct difference between the two. If you go to, to work every day thinking that your job is law enforcement, you'll think that your job is to write tickets and make arrests. And I contend that that's a very, very, very small part of your job. Instead, if you go to work every day realizing that you are indeed a police officer and the profession that you're in is policing, you will realize that your goal, your mission, your job is to protect and to serve. And you will realize that in any encounter, any situation, tickets and arrests are but two, two of the hundreds of options available to you to handle that situation. So always remember, you're police officers, not law enforcement. My second challenge to you is to serve with honor. Now in our profession, honor means keeping your promises, the promises you make to your community and the promises you make to our profession in your oath of honor and in our values. Serving with honor means doing what's right because it's the right thing to do, not simply because it's required and not simply because somebody will find out. It's doing more than the law requires and less than the law allows. Now I don't know when was the last time you read the Declaration of Independence, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't last night or this morning. Probably wasn't even yesterday. But hopefully you remember enough about that document from your social studies classes to remember that when our founding fathers wrote that, they realized that every word in that document was going to be scrutinized, every phrase, every paragraph, not just in the colonies, but around the world. So for our purposes, I find it extremely relevant and important that the last word, the very last word in that document is honor. To this we pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And so my second challenge to you is for you to serve with that same sacred honor. My third challenge to you is to serve with courage. Certainly in our profession, we expect you to be brave in the face of danger. But there's another layer to courage in our profession because of the awesome responsibilities with which we have been entrusted. It takes courage to serve with integrity. It takes courage to serve ethically. So my third challenge to you is always have the courage to do what's right, to serve ethically and with integrity, regardless of obstacles, regardless of temptations, regardless, unfortunately, sometimes of peer pressure. Always have the courage to serve ethically. And my last challenge to you is to serve with commitment, a commitment to your community, a commitment to the profession, and just as importantly, a commitment to yourselves. And in our profession, the cornerstone for that commitment is excellence. Excellence, excellence, excellence in everything you do. In other words, always strive to be the best that you can be. Never settle for simply being better than the person next to you. Never settle for simply being good enough to get a promotion, to get a good job review, to stay out of trouble. Never settle for doing the minimum, because quite honestly, there is no room for mediocrity in police work. Now you've been tested and retested. Officer Toronto has referred to, or uh, told you and reminded you about the endeavor in which you just completed and all of the trials and tribulations therein. So you've been tested and retested to bring you to this point in your career, and yet you haven't had the final exam. No, the directors and Officer Toronto and Sergeant Eldridge are not going to take you back down to one of the classrooms and give you another test. No, the final test starts when you get to those doors. Because at that point, 70%, 80%, 90%, and yes, sometimes 100% is no longer good enough. Nobody wants a police officer, constable, deputy, reserve, showing up at their doorstep who's only 90% good at police work. 
Furthermore, once you become a police officer, you lose the right to be unfit. And in our profession, we have three dimensions to fitness. Certainly, there's physical fitness. You have an obligation to stay physically fit because your community expects it, your peers expect it. They expect you to be prepared to do the rigors of the job on a moment's notice. The second dimension is moral fitness, always acting ethically and with integrity. But the third dimension that's often overlooked, especially by us, is mental fitness, always striving to be the best that we can be, always looking to be better. So this is just the start of your training and the start of your education, not the end of it. We call it graduation because it is culmination of the training to date. But don't imply from that that it is the end of anything. It is but the beginning. And in addition, you have an extra hurdle. Most of you know that full-time officers in the Commonwealth are required to attend almost 900 hours of training. You've not had that. But you know what? When you show up at a call, nobody looks at your badge. Nobody looks at your patch. Nobody's looking to see whether it says deputy, constable, reserve, auxiliary. All they see is a person with a badge and a uniform. And what do they expect? 100% police work. So my commitment challenge to you is to make a commitment to yourself to bridge that gap. Attend training, ask questions, read, study, don't stop now. And most of all, especially most of all, if you don't know something, find the answer. Never settle for not knowing. So my challenge to you is to always serve with commitment to excellence. Every hour of every shift of every day. Excellence, excellence, excellence. The best that you can be. So remember, you're police officers, not law enforcement. And I challenge you to serve with honor, with courage, and a commitment to excellence in all you do. Congratulations and Godspeed. Thank you, Director Zipkowitz. I'd now like to address the class as well as guests and families that are here on behalf of the Academy staff. I want to say congratulations that it has been a pleasure teaching you, getting to know you, working with you, that we are always here for you for questions. If you just want to make contact and say hello, let us know how something worked out training-wise. And that's all part of joining the police family. As your speakers have mentioned, where training never stops. If you have any need in the future, please feel free to contact us. We know that you're well trained. We put you through an awful lot. Now to enlighten some of the families and friends that are here. What we put our graduates through were law exams, were exams that were physical exams, defensive tactics, uh, taking people into custody, communication uh, curriculum, how to talk to people, how to interview people, how to get information for people, but not just to prosecute, but to help, how to work with the communities that they're going to serve. And you're part of it also. You're part of it also with our officers. Maybe, maybe just to listen. At other times to, to comment on something or to be a shoulder for some of the things that we see where we need that support at home. So, so please know that for us to do our job, it's going to take everybody in this room to support one another. Back to the class. We sincerely say congratulations to you. We know that you're going to do a fine job out there. Absolutely know that. What I'd like to do now is introduce
the class speaker, the president of the class, Officer Katie April. Thank you, sir. Sorry, my speech is not here. Good morning, everyone, while I get my speech out here. <laughs> On behalf of the 3rd ROC, I would like to start off by thanking the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department, specifically Sheriff Stephen Tompkins and Assistant Deputy Superintendent and Director of Training, Jose Mojica, who not only provided us, but welcomed us into their house over the last six months. Thank you. Thank you to Academy Directors Christopher Waits and Vincent Lamberti, as well as all the sponsoring departments who have afforded us the opportunity to be sitting here today. Thank you to all the guests here supporting us, as well as those who are unable to attend, but continuously support us in our everyday lives. On November 7th, 2015, 62 recruit officers reported to the training academy for our first day, thinking the next six months would go on forever. We may have lost a few recruits along the way, but here we are, 46 strong. When we arrived on that first day, we were unsure if we should go outside or go into the academy but one recruit's attempt to enter the building quickly cleared that up. When we heard yelling coming from inside and we watched him hurry back outside. It was on this day many of us met staff instructors Medeiros and Toronto for the first time. When the time came, they proceeded outside, narrowing in on their targets, us, yelling and screaming, directing everyone to form up in some type of organized fashion and conducting roll call in alphabetical order. This really was fun for everyone, unless you were a recruit officer. Once in formation, the recruit officers who fell at the beginning of the squad rows were selected by default as the four squad leaders. This was the first time, but certainly not the last time, Staff Instructor Toronto would threaten that being a squad leader was a temporary position, noting that we would all be fired for screwing up at some point during the academy. I'm proud to stand here today and report that all four squad leaders, Michael Edwards, Adam Elias, Wilson Mack, and Jason Smith, broke the tradition of those temporary positions by dodging termination, and leading each of their squads by example and with integrity throughout the entire academy. As the academy progressed past the first week, there was plenty more yelling and screaming, but we became a bit more relaxed and began to build the foundations of our training. Lieutenant Graham of the Bedford Police Department instructed classes including constitutional law, criminal law, motor vehicle law, and information technology. These subjects are arguably some of the most important to law enforcement training, but also arguably the most difficult and dry. Lieutenant Graham's teaching style continuously kept us engaged by incorporating humor and his own life experiences, both personal and professional, into our classroom. He also kept recruit officer Justin Dove in check by not letting him ask all of his questions five minutes before class was going to be dismissed. Detective Weil of the Amesbury Police Department spent numerous days educating us on the relevance and reality of domestic violence, sexual assault, child and elder abuse. He has made it his mission to give victims of domestic violence a voice and break the silence of these issues within law enforcement. His unwavering, his unwavering dedication to help battered women across the Commonwealth could never receive enough recognition. It can be difficult at times to find a veteran police officer who expels the same passion for their job as what you would expect they did straight out of the academy. Sergeant Eldridge of the Newton Police Department is one of these officers. You would be hard pressed to find a recruit officer who doesn't look up to Sergeant Eldridge. His passion for police work was immediately apparent from day one. Sergeant Eldridge's promotion of positivity, ethics and integrity has shown us that a positive attitude, attention to detail and taking pride in the job we've been set out to do can overcome situations where too often stress and negativity prevail. Lieutenant May of the Raleigh Police Department instructed field sobriety testing, PBT, breathalyzer, and radar training. During radar training, he insisted that we remain low profile as we headed out to practice recording radar in live traffic. If you just take a minute and picture yourself driving down the road and seeing 46 police officers in bright yellow vests standing on the curb with some of them pointing radar guns at your car, that's about as low profile as it got, but it certainly wasn't for lack of trying. Staff Instructor Toronto, retired officer of the Waltham Police Department and currently of the Boston University Medical Center, held us to the highest standards from the onset. 
If Officer Toronto was at the academy, you prayed that your boots were shiny enough, your shirt was ironed, and your duty belt was in line. Officer Toronto taught us the importance of referring back to the fundam basic fundamentals of our training. These fundamentals are those that would make us the best police officers, be respected, and keep us safe. We are grateful he shared his wisdom and experience with us throughout the academy. As modern day policing becomes increasingly dangerous, defense tactics and applied patrol procedures rise to one of the most important elements of training. Officer Wentworth of the Waltham Police Department, Officer Miller of the Boston Police Department, Sergeant Eldridge of the Newton Police Department, as well as guest instructors, including Deputy Superintendent Jose Mojica of the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department, trained us to not only protect the public, but to protect ourselves against threats we will inevitably face on and off duty. Some of our training included the use of chemical agents, firearms, batons, hand-to-hand -hand combat, defense techniques, compliant and non-compliant handcuffing, active shooter and felony takedowns. Recruit officer Nathaniel Bolt, being the youngest member of our class, was consistently the subject of the instructor's demonstrations of physical techniques, such as takedowns, pain compliance techniques, and handcuffing. Recruit officer Bolt may or may not have left each day with minor bruising, but at 20 years old, he recovered just fine, and his sacrifice to being tossed around assisted all of us in becoming proficient in what we were learning. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> In addition to the aforementioned instructors, we are grateful and fortunate to have many other guest instructors who took their own time to train us in subjects such as autism awareness, mental health awareness, report writing, firearms, field sobriety testing, and defense tactics. I would like to acknowledge our fellow brothers and sisters in corrections who could and never will receive enough recognition for what they do. To the six county sheriffs in our class, thank you for volunteering to patrol the toughest beats inside the walls of our county jails and state prisons. While police officers have a belt full of tools, you protect the public and yourselves against the incarcerated by using your bare hands and a radio. The personal experiences you shared regarding your work inside the jails and out in the community was beneficial and enhanced our learning experience. Recruit officer Suffolk County Sheriff Nicholas Lopreori deserves a special thank you for managing the training facility. He was always the first to arrive and the last to leave, assuring the logistics of the academy ran smoothly. Over the last six months, Staff Instructor Officer Medeiros of the Cambridge Police Department did much more than point out our faults, embarrass us, and yell at us. In addition, in addition to squaring us away, he instructed multiple classes, including first responder training and mental health awareness. <laughs> at the start of the academy, Officer Medeiros assigned recruit officer Alyssa, Alyssa Roderick to monitor the Officer Down Memorial page, tracking those officers across the country whose watches would end between our first academy day to our last. Roderick stood up in front of our class far too many times to read the memorial pages of those 54 officers who had been killed in the line of duty. As we sat and listened to Roderick, it became apparent that this was not one of Medeiros' ploys to torture us, but it served a greater purpose, a lesson showing that none of us are exempt from the dangers we will face as police officers. Although not exempt from all dangers, instructing officers Medeiros, Toronto, Eldridge, Wentworth, Miller, Graham, and all of the Academy staff have given us the tools to significantly increase our chances to go home safely after each tour of duty, and for that we are grateful. Tomorrow many of us will enter our communities, our neighborhoods, and our streets, and like no other, our jobs begin with a sacred oath. We set out to begin our careers during a time of great division between the badge we wear and the citizens we have sworn to serve and protect. The way we and all newly graduating police officers uphold our oath will determine the future of law enforcement in America. Today we honor those 54 police officers who made the ultimate sacrifice over the last six months as well as those who fell before them. Today we make a promise to all of the law-abiding citizens of the Commonwealth, to our loved ones, and most importantly to ourselves, to always practice vigilance, to acknowledge the hair standing up on the backs of our neck, to be respectful, to show integrity, and in those moments we think are the end, we promise to keep fighting and to never give up. Congratulations to the third graduating Recruit Officer Class of the New England Law Enforcement Training Center's MPTC Reserve Intermittent Police Academy. I am honored and humbled you have allowed me to lead our class, and I commend you for putting up with my voice for the last six months. As all of you know, being a law enforcement officer goes far beyond enforcing the law. After today, some of our paths may never cross again, but we came divided and leave united as we join a sisterhood and brotherhood to begin our journeys walking the thin blue line. Thank you, and be safe.
Katie, thank you very much. Can we post the guide on for the class, please, and take your seat. At this time, we'd like to make the presentations of the class awards. These awards uh, are given to, wish we could give them to every student, but students that the staff and directors have uh, met and conferred on and uh, have done a above and beyond uh, job with these different disciplines. The first award presented by Sergeant Eldridge <coughs> is the Defensive Tactics Award. This award is going to Ronaldo Maderos. The next award given to two officers is the academic award. The academic award goes to the student officer having the highest overall score on all academic awards. These two awards, the academic award, will be presented by Officer Mike Medeiros. Presented to Officer Justin Dove and Officer Michael Wilson. The next award is the Top Gun Award, presented by Officer Cliff Alves. The Top Gun Award goes to the student officer who's achieved the best marksmanship scores during firearms training. This award, also given to two officers, goes to Moses Da Silva and Justin Dove. Our last award is the Director's Award. The Director's Award is given to a student who has given 110% of himself or herself, and the individual is chosen by the Academy's Director, and is the one that stands out on a day-to-day -day basis, wanting to learn more, to assist, to help, to do what needs to get done for the furtherance of the class and success of the Academy. This award goes to Officer Katie Appel. would like to now, what everybody's been waiting for, is for the issuing of the graduation certificates. So we will start with Squad 1. Squad 1, please stand. Oh, 
Okay. We're going to do uh, alphabetical. Uh, I'm sorry. Squadron, please take a seat. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, first, Officer Daniel Anderson. Katie Appel. And before I call our next officer, Nathaniel, please face the audience and let people know that you are all healed. And there we go. Nathaniel Bolt. Brady Camposano. James Sonnet. Victor Chu. Edvin Kronolik. <laughs> Moses Da Silva. Connor Desmond. <laughs> Justin Dove. Michael Edmonds. I'm sorry, Michael Edwards. I'm sorry. Adam Elias. Michael Foot <laughs> Benjamin Franzis. First squad, take your seats. Continuing on, Paul Green.
Steve Hamilton. Brian Hart. Jason Hyde. <laughs> Telly Jack. <laughs> Rashid Kaleem. Derek Lemereau. <laughs> Nicholas La Priori. Hunter Lowell. <laughs> Wilson Mack. <laughs> Alexandra May. John McHugh. <laughs> Jamie McMillan. <laughs> Ronaldo Medeiros. Keith Militello. <laughs> Miguel Montalvo. Matthew O'Laughlin. <laughs> Nicholas Palmieri. <laughs> Louis Polanco. Alyssa Roderick. <laughs> Chris Kerrigan.
Antonio O'Neill. Daryl Simmons. Jason Smith. Tyler Peters. Christopher Thibodeau. Raymond Earls. <laughs> Joseph Valentin. Brendan Walsh. <laughs> and Officer Michael Wilson. Thank you very much. Class, please turn around. I'm going to ask everybody to stay standing, please. We have a presentation to be made by the class president. And let's go ahead and do that now. No? Yes? We pride ourselves on our flexibility. Um, on behalf of the third ROC, we'd like to present all of the staff with the our plaque um, picture to be coming soon, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
graduates, guests, I'd like you to please bow your heads for the police officer's prayer. Almighty God, we pray to you in heaven up above. Watch over our dear police officers and protect them with your love. Please guide them as they keep us safe both day and night and hold them, hold them firmly in your care should danger come their way. Give them true strength and courage as they serve till duties end. And one more thing to ask, dear Lord, protect their families and their friends. This concludes the graduation ceremony for class three. Congratulations and thank you everyone. Standing for Jimmy Graham, the last minute. Good job, though. Last minute standing. Good job. Yeah, sorry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no worries about it. I mean, they're, they're us, yeah. though, correct? Correct. There's, uh, uh, of course, Nicole. Hi. Well, the sheriff told me he said he, he had to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah. No worries. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Great job. Where's Mike? Let's select you. Where's Mike? Where's Cliff? Great job. Thank you, sir. Hope to see you again soon. Doug, you did that job. Good luck to you. Ronaldo. Right. Yeah. 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 Y